Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. Tonight we're talking about coping with stress during the COVID-19 outbreak. Continue talking to us on all our social media platforms at Y254 Channel. You can also talk to me at Patricia Murioki. Thank you, Zakia, for finding the time to be here with us tonight. Yes, yes, I hope that yes. you're staying, you've been safe, you're keeping safe, you're practicing every directive that has been given by oh, the Ministry of I Health. I do that to boots and I hope that's enough. Okay. I don't think there's anything else I haven't done up to okay. you know, this moment, but we say there's always room for improvement. Okay, yes. so we know this pandemic has found us in a time where we, we had not expected for it. So certain things have changed, certain patterns, uh, how we used to live life has changed. We now know that we're supposed to be home by 9 p.m. We know that there are certain people who cannot um, go to work, they have to work from home. There are people who, has, who have also lost their jobs. So as we get to this topic of uh, coping with stress and how really people watching us tonight can learn how to do that, what really is important? How important is it to make sure that our mental health is okay, is on check during this pandemic? It is very important, Patricia, because at the end of it all, we need to remain sober because life is still going on. Um, God forbid, we are not saying that everyone will perish and we are not hoping for that and we don't even hope for that. Yes. So because of that, we don't want a situation where at the end of this all, then we come out, you know, like people who are actually sick. We don't want to be a sick nation. We don't have to be sick families. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. We don't want to be a sick world. Mm -hmm. So we have to remain mentally okay mm -hmm. because we know that this is temporary. Okay. It is there to pass. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't go with it. Let it go. But we remain sober. We remain healthy. Mm -hmm. We remain okay mm -hmm. because we still have to function for the future. Okay. Yes. When you talk about stress, it's very difficult, I believe, for someone to even probably identify if they are going through yeah. stress. Probably if you're living with a loved one or in a homestead where you have more than one person, how then what do you look out for to be able to identify and realize that Patricia is under stress and probably this is the type of help that she needs? Okay. Thank you for that. Now, uh, there are so many things we have to look at and um, uh, there are two categories of individuals that we, we, we can talk about. Okay. Uh, the first category is the children okay. and the second category the adults mm -hmm. and um, their uh, stress may be actually noted noted you know differently mm -hmm. depending on what they do because we know that for children mm -hmm. we can easily look at some of the things like how they play their play pattern mm -hmm. we can look at uh, how they respond to directives that are given within the family setup mm -hmm. and we say for children mostly they become so irritable mm -hmm. and uh, irritable it means that the children we know that they'll not want to sit at a, you know one place yes. and just you, you know concentrate on something mm -hmm. because they have this energy that is just they have extra energy mm -hmm. and they need to use it and use it positively mm -hmm. so for them it's about going out to play mm -hmm. do, doing all these things meeting friends uh, during that time when they're school they'll go to school and all this energy will be displaced there mm -hmm. but now because there's no school they are within this the, the, the house so they get irritated because they don't know what to do next mm -hmm. rules have been formulated they have to follow these, these rules even within the house you, you know set up they have for example to wash hands all the time for mm -hmm. them this is too much so you realize that when they become a little bit adam and they don't want to do what the parent is, is advocating for okay. they don't know that this child is not okay mm -hmm. because maybe initially they used to do it okay because it was not so often mm -hmm. but now when it's so often they get bored mm -hmm. so looking for that I, point where you see them that they are getting bored with certain activities mm -hmm. that is one thing to tell you that they're actually going through stress because okay. it is too much mm -hmm. the second thing when they become so irritable they cannot settle at one place or they become some of them will just be crying depending on the age like the young ones will just be crying all the time mm -hmm. because they feel like you know they've been you know kept at one place and they, they want to get out mm -hmm. and yet the new the, the rules do not allow yes. so when they become irritable you know they are not okay and the question will follow is what are we going to do about it mm -hmm. and when you come for the small children some of them will even have nightmares mm -hmm. you know depending on the situation because they may not have witnessed anything happening you know anything traumatic yeah. but then when the rules are so stringent that to a point where they feel like they've been handcuffed mm -hmm. then they may actually start developing nightmares mm -hmm. for some they'll even go through what we call repression going through the behavior that they used to have, have before mm -hmm. and uh, they, they actually overgrew them okay. like bed waiting like you know uh, thumb sucking mm -hmm. and all those things mm -hmm. simply because they feel like uh, they don't know the, the way out so these are some of the nitty gritty that we look at children insomnia or lack of sleep for mm -hmm. some this one is actually very common that you realize some of them do not sleep mm -hmm. and these days we know the pattern has changed very much that yes. people actually stay almost overnight yeah. yeah and the children are there too so realize apart from that they may have uncoordinated sleep 
simply because this is happening and sometimes their pattern, their routine pattern is actually messed up. Okay. Then when we go to the adults, then there are some things that we we'll look at. Even some of the adults actually become irritable, mm -hmm. but most of them will go through burnout. Okay. Now, we always have a tendency of believing that burnout occurs when somebody, for example, has overworked himself or mm -hmm. herself, mm -hmm. but no, it can be the other way around. Even sitting in one place not knowing what to do can actually bring about burnout. Yes. So when we see this, we may realize that uh, somebody may actually lose, you know, interest in the activities, mm -hmm. you know, of choice mm -hmm. they want to do. Even bathing. People yeah. don't bathe, by the way, these mm -hmm. days. That, that's so unfortunate. We hear people are uh, spending their whole day in pajamas and all that, yeah. unless they have a meeting, Zoom meeting, which yeah. has become an in thing. But these are some of the things. And some of them, especially those ones who have been laid off, then you can imagine they go through a lot of emotional stress and some of them can be very aggressive okay and some of them may even go to an extent of you know involving themselves in drug and substance abuse mm -hmm. some of them may not be may have been alcoholic then but mm -hmm. now re all of a sudden they start drinking mm -hmm. or they start drinking excessively they've been drinking but they were managing it mm -hmm. it was normal mm -hmm. but now they do it excessively and then you realize here there's a problem then when the people become so aggressive like um, between the spouses somebody cannot ask the other you know partner a question Mm -hmm. this one becomes so like so angry at everything and you realize something is not right because when people become so angry they know something is is, is, is not okay. okay and these are some of the things we look at for grown-ups even insomnia is there mm -hmm. actually much or for some it's even now hypersomnia you know, hypersomnia where they just sleep, sleep they yeah. don't want to leave the bed mm -hmm. you know somebody just sleeping because they don't know when I wake up where, where am I supposed to go yeah but even in the process if they've lost their job and that's why this whole thing is happening then it's not good because they may actually sleep into the pressure okay so we need to take action there in the so yeah. you've, you've talked about very many areas yeah. and you've touched on children and yeah. uh, some of the things that probably as a parent or as a guardian that you could try to pick on yeah. so now for a parent who has noticed that their child probably is going through all these stages yeah. for probably someone living with an adult and they feel that this person now sleeps more than they yeah. used to what now can we do as okay. now as a person around yeah. what now do you do to make sure that you're helping this person because we don't also to get to a point where by the stress now gets to, to, to the extent where it becomes a uh, depression. Exactly. That's very true. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, going uh, uh, with these categories again, for the children, the approach could be different mm -hmm. in that uh, knowing the activities of the children that they, you know, they normally like, you know, uh, you, you know performing, mm -hmm. then we say that when we notice or we pick these schools that they are actually sleeping into, you know, a lot of stress that mm -hmm. may lead into, for example, even depression, mm -hmm. then we need to act. We have to let, first of all, the children connect. Okay. And this one, we advocate for the grown-ups as well. Mm -hmm. That connection is very important. These days, uh, we are happy because at least we have all these gadgets, the phones, the laptops, the computers, and all that. Mm -hmm. So when uh, adults are having their meetings, maybe through Zoom and Skype and all mm -hmm. that, we have also to allow children to connect with their peers. Mm -hmm. And we can allow them, for example, time to have a phone call, mm -hmm. uh, maybe through WhatsApp, okay. and even that, depending on the age, we have to monitor, of mm -hmm. course. We have to see what is it that they are communicating with the other. Mm -hmm. But then that time to, to communicate with others is very important. So yes. we should not deny them the right to communicate because that's way they are connected. They get to hear from the others mm -hmm. what they are doing. And sometimes they even exchange ideas. Oh, yes. we did one, two, three, and then the children can pick and also say, Mama, we need to do one, two, three. Okay. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. The other thing is to keep on reassuring them. And you cannot say, we, we say you cannot pour from a cup that is empty. Yes. You as a parent need to have your cup full. You must have managed your own disasters to be mm -hmm. able to help a child. Mm -hmm. Meaning you have to manage to be able to deal with your stress, with your anxieties. We know that this is something that has brought a lot of anxiety, you know, across board. Mm -hmm. uh, and even adults are also going through this. Mm -hmm. But then for you to be able to help a child, you need to manage your own anxiety. And where you can't manage alone as an individual or through the support of the family, mm -hmm. you have to seek help. Okay. So that but when you're okay, you are able to help that child who is not okay. okay. So by helping this child, it means you keep them connected. You maintain, uh, help them maintain a daily routine. Mm -hmm. You don't just let them, because children are in the house, then they can just do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah. No. Let there be a routine. We call it a new normal. So develop a routine according to the new normal. Okay. Yeah. They can have their mask on and play you know, outside, depending on uh, the kind of people who are out there. Mm -hmm. If you have a big compound, let them plow out, play out there. They don't need to have a mask if they are just themselves there, mm -hmm. nor any other intruder or a visitor who is okay. there, but they can play ball. And what I keep on telling, physical activity is very important. So as they play, you're actually advocating for physical activity, which is very important for them. Remember, we need them to go to the parks, to go to school, to jump all over the field, yes. but then the little that they can do, let them do. Even when you don't have enough place outside, even within the house, you can even put 
push your seats and let the children have fun. Them. Don't say I want, don't want my seats to be touched. I don't know they are clean. This okay. is not time for cleanliness. I, I mean, cleanliness is, is important, but you, you know there's that you you don't become so strict with your staff simply because you feel like I don't know my coach needs to be to stay like this because maybe you are a perfectionist and whoever you are. Mm -hmm. No, you just try to create space for children because they need to have this participate in this physical activities. Okay. You can dance with them. You can you know jump rope with them. You mm -hmm. can play ball with them. All these things are possible even within the shortest, you, you know, the, the limited space possible. Okay. Yes. So I would like us to talk about stigmatization as yeah. we also uh, probably take some comments yeah. from uh, social media. We have had the CS for Health yeah. say that they are now uh, implementing home-based um, exactly. uh, isolation. So now for people who are going to find themselves with uh, patients or with loved ones who have COVID-19, we've had uh, stigmatization be a topic since the yes. virus, uh, the first case of uh, COVID-19 was reported in the country. How now can these people help this person recover uh, do the recovery process and how can the society come in to make sure that we stop and end uh, COVID-19 stigma? A very good question, uh, Patricia, because I have never understood where this stigma is coming from. Uh, quote, unquote, this is flu. It is not the kind of disease that you should actually look at it and say because of one, two, three, this disease has befallen someone. Okay. Anyone can get this. It doesn't choose in gender, you know, status, class, or race. Mm -hmm. It is just it just cuts across board. So this stigma, I think, it actually may be coming in because anytime there's something new, people do not really understand the entire you you know makeup of the disease. Okay. So they may associate it. For for us, unfortunately, we're Africans. There are so many things we believe in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they may actually associate it with maybe your caste, mm -hmm. maybe switchcraft, mm -hmm. maybe uh, there's the something that you are not doing right in your family and that's yeah. why this is bef befalling you. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. And that understanding, we say, that can only be done through psychoeducation. Yes. So I say, as we embark on home-based care, then the Ministry of Health has to look at something very important. Mm -hmm. How do they encompass counsellors in this whole setup? Okay. Because you cannot just let people go with their sick person in the house and then they have no idea how to actually deal with the psychological part of this person. Mm -hmm. They can deal with it physically, you know, so physically, you know, maybe emotionally through giving this person support. Okay. But again, psychologically, this person, they, they may not, the caregiver may not actually understand and the patient may not understand. Mm -hmm. So we say that it, where possible, and we say this is very, very important. For me, I don't say where possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible because there are mental health workers outside there, so okay. many, mm -hmm. who actually just ready waiting to be called in and to help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, they do it pro bono. Mm -hmm. So let them come in. Of course, we don't. I don't sit here and advocate that it should be pro bono. Everything mm -hmm. people are getting salaries anyway. But where we can help, we do help actually. Mm -hmm. And the most important, let them accompany these, you know, healthcare workers, these people who are taking care of the sick. Because anytime we say that somebody has to remain in the house, it means that maybe at one point there'll be a nurse who will be coming in to mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. And where there are reason, maybe they are giving directives from the hospital that this is what you're supposed to do. Because when a person calls, they're supposed to give, be given all the information on how to handle this person. Okay. So there should be a special area where a, a health, I mean, a, a counselor or a, a psychologist mm -hmm. can be slotted in so that they are giving them to come in, adhere to all the directives, but be able to help this person maybe once a week mm -hmm. or twice a week to come and help this family. Mm -hmm. Psycho educate the family, give them the psychological support, mm -hmm. show them, give them the tenets on how to deal with such a situation to minimize stress, you know, and, and also to minimize harm. Because okay. by minimizing stress, it means that this person understands what is Corona all about, what is COVID all about. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? Why am I actually in? And also to alleviate that pain that is associated with stigma. Because mm -hmm. when a person is actually educated on what COVID is all about and what it entails and how it comes in and how it goes, then they may not actually feel that um, this is, you, you know, something so horrible mm -hmm. or something out of the norm. It's just a disease like any other okay. and we can deal with it. Okay. So counselors, psychologists have to be given a slot to be, help, to be able to help this individual. And I say that one is very much possible, mm -hmm. and I sit here advocating for that. Okay, let us look at some of the comments that we have. We have uh, Soloki saying, to mention a stress, CTE meanza jana. So for such a person who is watching us tonight, and probably this person has found themselves in very many phases in life where they have found themselves stressed. Yeah. How can they cope now with stress? We're not only now addressing the COVID-19 yeah. stress, yeah. But, but for such a person watching us tonight, this is what they have expressed. What do you think? 
I like work what them. Solo has said there mm -hmm. because I'm looking at it from a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. To mention I stress Haikuanza Sasa, Haiku Ama Haikuanza Jana, mm -hmm. it's because this person has the inner resources mm -hmm. to deal with stress. Okay. People are never the same. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to understand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that even during a pandemic like this, everyone will go down, mm -hmm. you know, so stressed. Some people actually are making the best out of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. They come up with new skills, they mm -hmm. re re identify their new skills, you know, they've tapped their inner yeah. resources and come up with some of them are cooks. I know, Patricia, what you have to <laughs> I know you too. You are good at that. And, okay. and I congratulate you for what you are doing. Thank you. So, basically, it doesn't mean that because it's a pandemic, everyone will go through stress. There are some people who will go through what we call uh, a, a, a eustress. Eustress is positive stress. Okay. There's what we call distress, which is now the negative stress. Mm -hmm. Now, eustress is mostly temporary. Mm -hmm. It's not permanent. It's something that a stress just happens, you know, comes in mm -hmm. simply because a situation is temporarily happening. Mm -hmm. But when it's over, the stress will be over. Okay. So most people have the inner resources to deal with this. Mm -hmm. So for these ones, we, they say Ilianza, so it means they are able to cope. Okay. These are the people we need to even, uh, 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 you know, have them to, to be help able to others. help and help others okay. who are not able to do that. And I'm sure they have a word or two to tell these others. Okay. So when we get them, we tell them, can you be part of us? Can we be able to help these other Give them, you know, the tenets of how you deal with the situation because mm -hmm. you may have actually the strength that the other person does not have. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Zakia, for really finding the time to come and talk about this. I hope for everyone who is watching us tonight, you've uh, been able to take one or two from what Zakia has uh, said tonight. Please, if you find yourself in a situation where probably you're going through stress, find uh, the coping mechanisms such as maybe try to read a book, try to talk to someone. I think talking to someone is always the best there that really works for people try to get out and even if you can go for a walk following every directive that has been given just put on a mask and go and just be in the presence probably of just some good um, environment and all that is going to work for us as we all continue fighting COVID-19 all I can say from Y254 we wish you a very good night my name is Patricia Morioki.